You want a Ducati Monster? Really? Why? It's like you want the pride of ownership and the financial burden of an Italian car from the 70s, but not that smug air of superiority that you get when you buy something like a Panigale or, oh, I don't know, a desert sled, perhaps. I mean the sled. What a man's bike. It can go on the street, it can go on the dirt, and you gotta be strong enough to pick it up when it falls over because it loves doing that a whole lot. And you want to pick up yourself a fancy SV650 instead? Okay, well, just because you asked so nicely, I'll give you the Ducati Monster, our usual so you want a treatment, don't say I never did nothing for you. But in all seriousness, the Monster is a very significant model in the history of motorcycling generally, and naked bikes specifically. It's a very popular way to get into that Ducati life due to a more palatable price tag and a whole lot of different options both new and in the secondhand market. Also, it's a Ducati you can get as your first motorcycle, and who wouldn't want to tell all their buddies, yeah, I started on a Ducati, that means I'm better than you. It's the ultimate flex. But all the best starter bikes in the world don't mean nothing if you're still rocking some old beat up canvas wallet. I mean, look at you. You're an adult, probably, with a job, maybe, and responsibilities. Well, you're watching Yammy Noob, so probably don't have that many of them. And a brand new Ducati. You're definitely gonna be busting out that wallet at the dealership, and you don't want Vinny in the service department to laugh at you because you're using the money-carrying equivalent of a hobo bindle on a stick. That's just not okay. Well, the Ridge has the solution you've been yearning for, the solution to all your money woes, and not the one that comes up every 7,500 miles, but all the other ones like, where are my cards? Why do I have a receipt from 12 years ago? And why do I stare deep into the void of my trifold wallet to see nothing but the gaping mall of inadequacy staring back at me? There is a better way. The Ridge makes the best wallet you can buy with a bunch of different colors and materials so you can customize to your heart's content. They've got a ton of five-star reviews. Spite and I are proud Ridge carriers, so you know it's got the right stuff. Get yours today by clicking the link down below using the code YAMMYNOOB for 10% off your order and free shipping. Do it now. But back to the monster. The first monsters rolled out of the factory in 1993, produced in Bologna, Italy, and designed as a muscle bike. Now, the motorcycling landscape of the 90s was all about who could build the biggest and baddest bikes, with each one pushing the envelope in terms of red raw speed. Japan was cranking out sport bikes left and right. If you didn't want to play that game, you had a few choices. Make a cruiser or a naked bike in the more classic UJM style, which had fallen out of favor. But Miguel Angel Galuzzi, a designer over in Italy, sat down with a nice espresso and some biscottis and had himself a little think. What if you could make a motorcycle with all the panache of a Ducati sport bike, but you could make it easy to ride? Not a cruiser per se, but one that would have a custom aftermarket scene to rival Harley Davidson, an urban brawler that makes use of the classic air-cooled 90-degree Desmo engine. Because the bike was so unproven, management gave Galuzzi a short leash and what he came with was a parts bin bike, taking bits from other successful motorcycles, the engine from the 900 Super Sport, and the frame from the 851 Superbike. He came up with a new tank design that felt both wide and muscular without being uncomfortable or hindering the riding experience. They decided to take the prototype to market in 1993 with the M900 which features a 904cc air-cooled two-valve desmodromic engine pumping out 80 horse and 56 foot-pounds of torque. It weighed in at 405 pounds dry so ready to ride it was probably closer to 450. It was quirky in the ways that only a true Ducatista could appreciate. It had a dry clutch which rattles like a tub of silverware falling down a mountain, carburetors so the bike was obnoxiously difficult to wake up on colder days, and that classically wonky Ducati gearbox where you find neutral only after you spend 30 seconds bouncing from first to second and then the stoplight turns green. But even with all that, the bike was a hit. They dropped the M600 in 94 and the M750 in 96. They even made an M400 for places like Italy, Japan, and other Asian markets. With all the looks of the bigger bike, but a more learner-appropriate 42 horsepower. The Monster was a motorcycling icon in the 90s and remained relatively unchanged until 2000 when Ducati added fuel injection to the Monster 900 because the only thing worse than a carburetor is one put together by Ducati. I'm sure it had 1,000 mile service intervals where you had to rebuild the whole thing or it would leak gas and implode. In 2001, Ducati introduced the S4, which was the Monster built on the liquid-cooled four-valve superbike engine, making 101 horse and 68 foot-pounds of torque out of its 90s. 
916 degree V twin. They also borrowed the twin disc Brembo brakes, the 43mm Showa suspension, and the instrument cluster from other bikes, so while it was still a crowd pleaser, it never really outgrew its parts bin quality. In 2005, the top tier SR4S Testa Stretta was revealed, using the 999 Superbike engine and Olin's front suspension. They also dropped the 696, which we recently featured in one of our head-to-head -head comparisons, where we put it up against its arch rival, the SV650, so you can check out how that stacks up against a modern sport naked bike. Throughout the 2000s, whenever Ducati made a big bike engine, they typically made a naked monster variant, which was usually the more attainable bike and the one you could actually ride on the daily. In the 2010s, Ducati slowly started replacing all their older, more raw monsters with bikes that featured liquid cooling, wet clutches, ABS, and traction control. In 2011, they released the 795, which was basically the 696 frame combined with the 803cc that Ducati would later use in their Scrambler line. Now, I don't want to bore you with all the different models because there's a lot of them. Instead, I'm going to break down the ones you can currently buy from the factory today. First up, you have the Monster 797, which is the same as the 795, putting down 73 horsepower and 49 foot-pounds of torque. This bike is basically an Italian SV650, or is the SV650 a Japanese 797? Huh. Anyways, if you're a little older or have a little experience, this is 100% a bike you could start on. Should you start on it? Probably not. It's a spicy meatball at about $10,000 brand new. They're also going to be pretty darn expensive to maintain, so I'd recommend starting somewhere else. There's no pain greater than dropping your shiny new Ducati as you try to practice in a parking lot. Moving on up, we have the Monster 821 with its 821cc V-twin putting down 109 horse and 63 foot-pounds of torque. This bike is starting to compete with the modern crop of middleweight naked bikes like the MT-09, Z900, and the Street Triple 765, and as such, it is definitely outside the realm of beginners in my opinion. The nice thing about this bike is you're getting some very upmarket features, including a full-color TFT, traction control, ABS, ride modes, and a bi-directional quick shifter. Man, I love it when my quick shifter goes both ways. The 821 base model comes in at 11995 and the stealth model is 12895 You really don't get any extra goodies on the stealth model, it's just not red, so unless you want your monster to be a little drab, save your money. Lastly, we've got the Big Daddy Monster 1200. It's got an 1198cc V-twin pumping out 147 horse and 91 foot-pounds of torque, and that's a stone's throw from Busa levels of torque, my dudes. You got your safety features, you got your wheelie control, TFT, quick shifter, riding modes, and anything you'd one out of a motorcycle, all for the low, low price of $17,595 for the S model. you also be getting a fully adjustable Olin suspension and the racing brake system, whatever that means. I actually did a first ride review of a 2018 Monster 1200S if you want to know what the full bananas monster is like. This bike plays with the likes of Hyper Nakeds, but in a world where you can get an MT-10 for $12,999, I'm not 100% sold. Also, the Super Duke R starts at $18,699, and that's a glorified supermoto with 180 horsepower and 103 foot-pounds of torque, and it sounds like this. If I were in the market for the King of Street Fighters, I'd have to pick the 1290. It's just a better machine. It is not, however, a Ducati, and there is something a little bit special about owning a duck. Now, let's assume that you've decided to pull the trigger on a pre-2001 monster. What kind of shenanigans might you be in for? Well, all of them. Literally anything that could go wrong with the Ducati can and will go wrong with one of these bikes. Like I said before, they're carbureted, so they're going to be a pain to get started, and if you're getting it secondhand, you're never going to know the last time the carb was cleaned. The belts and valves need to be serviced every 6,000 to 7,500 miles or they'll implode from lack of cash infusion. Also, since the early models had this quirk where the handlebars would slam into the tank before they hit full lock, most monsters have a pair of matching tank dents typically right under the logo. The tanks are getting rarer and rarer too as time goes by, so if you can't fix it, you're going to need a new one. I'd really caution you against getting an older monster unless you absolutely positively want the classic. It's just not worth the headaches. So what about pre-2010 model year monsters? Well, you'll be happy to know that they fixed the handlebar tent dank feature by pulling a big brain Ducati move and cutting holes in the tank where the handlebar would otherwise smack into the tank. Thanks, Ducati! These bikes are really what you should be looking for if you want to go for a monster on the cheap. There's so many different varieties, and aside from the general quirkiness of a Ducati, there aren't too many glaring flaws. I think the middle-gen monsters might be the best for the 696, and if you get one, the owners fix the left side case, which can often cause a oil leak as it runs. Other than that, it's just the usual things. Desmo valves done every 7,500 miles, a transmission that would sooner send you up to the raging inferno of hell than go into neutral, and needing a good 5 minutes to warm up before they run right. The modern monsters have solved 
resolved a lot of these issues, but they're not perfect. For some reason, Ducati wanted to resolve the tank dent issue from the 90s, and they decided that this time, instead of messing with the tank, they'd shorten the steering lock, which makes it kind of a pain in the butt to do a U-turn on. It's kind of ridiculous. It still doesn't want to find neutral, and even when it does, it probably won't turn the light on. Specific to the 797, you might find that the final drive gearing causes the on-off throttle to be jerky, and a whiskey throttle in first or second gear will definitely pick the front wheel up. Now, you might see that as a feature or a benefit, up to you. Similarly, the brakes are touchy and have a light switch quality to them in stock form. Once again, the valves are a big deal, but with every iteration, Ducati slowly marches towards a reliable motorcycle. The Monster is the quintessential naked bike, and if you were willing to put up with some Italian tomfoolery, you could do a whole heck of a lot worse. Well, howdy, partner. How's it going? Now, this video is over, but I tell you what, you click on this one right over here, you can keep watching yourself some Yammy Noob. Now, if y'all didn't know, we're based out of Austin, Texas, so click on that video, you might check out something cool.